Hello and welcome back to more Banner Saga. So, I started recording the next episode, got through all the mar all the stuff here, got into the first fight, and I crashed. And it looked like I had to play through everything from before up to here. So, I tried to keep everything as the same as I could for the playthrough. Uh, I have a, a fighter more than before, uh, but my heroes are slightly different. Uh, not the people, but the numbers. So, Hacken got injured earlier on, so I'm going to rest him up before we head out. I'm going to keep him hit uh, heavy hitting. Gunolf is still heavy hitting. Uh, he needs some armor on him. Eric is ooh, ready for a promotion. Uh, not yet. Uh, he's, he's still doing great. We have... Whoops, not you. Actually, yeah, you're okay. Maxed out armor. Luden. Luden's surprisingly useful on the field. Ursa. So, um, I'm actually gonna, only going to promote you. And balance you out a bit. Let's see what the market has. Obsidian Bell is a rank 5 item. Bale's Locket. Plus 2 willpower. For 10? I don't need it. I don't need the map. I know where I am. Let's rest those two days. <coughs> I really want him back. And Gunwolf can go second. And Shield Guy. I like having the three humans. But having some backup guys is not a bad thing. We will move on. So only only a couple days more ahead than I was, because I had to rest to heal somebody. You hear a shout echo on the wind, a standard standard Varl greeting. A caravan of Varl are headed in your direction. It's probably a few hundred in total. You meet them halfway. You must be with Vognir. Was. He didn't make it. He's serious. It's getting grim out here, but. Didn't expect that. You're flying the Schlid banner. What's happening? Isn't Ulfar in charge here? I'm Fasolt. Ulfar is still in Schlid, in case he needs to be. He sent me to meet Vognir. Well, you. We've seen nothing happening in Schlid yet. What do you mean? No dredge. They never came through Schlid. They're all pouring out of Ridgehorn. We only just found out about it. Our group went that way. Well, one group went that way. We came here. Ridgehorn, that fort in the bay? That place has been abandoned for hundreds of years. Yeah, well, maybe that's why they're there. By all accounts, it looks like another damned invasion. Luden forces his way into the conversation. Wait a godless minute. What did you do? Careful now. You be careful. What did you start? You think men don't remember history? The long banner hand hangs in Aberang. The Second Great War nearly screwed us all. What did you do this time? Who the fame is this? Take him and go to Grofheim. We'll meet you later. Are you insane? He just said an army of dredge are pouring out of that fort. Go on to Grofheim then, Prince. Having your blood on my hands will be worse than doing nothing. This shuts Luden up for a moment. You can see the battle raging in his head. He looks desperate for safety, but he didn't expect to flee like a coward. He expected you to come along. He glances at his men. We're already this far. If this is the Varl's doing, I'll know of it, and so will my father. Besides, you need my help and my fighters. So if I go, so do Ursa and Bersin. Luden's unexpected flip-flop catches you like a swift kick to the shins. Mogir can't contain a chuckle. Ha! <laughs> the prince has courage. Do whatever you like, Luden. Paint me the villain, hack. What do I care? I'm sick of you being the only one who does as he pleases in this alliance. These are Varl lands. We're facing an army of dredge. How much experience do you have in these matters? True, mankind has never provoked them into war. You're going for a third. Is taunting the dredge into genocide a game for your kind? Ooh, lay the prince flat. No, we're going to walk away. You curse and threaten pandemonium. The prince has chosen to be no responsibility of yours. If Luden stays, so do facile warriors. They join the caravan. 330 more Varl. Wow, that's a lot of Varl. 
Ooh, Godstone. The hike approaching the Godstone is murder. You recall how most Godstones were built on hills overlooking other Godstones, so travelers could follow them and find their way between cities. It does nothing to ease your pains. Dredge! shouts Mogir near the front of the caravan. Suddenly, the black rocks are whizzing past your head. What the hell is this? you shout. Mogir shakes his head. A stone slams into the shield of a nearby Varl, exploding in a flash of light and razor-sharp fragments. Get behind the shield, bangers! Ooh, we outnumber them a bit. <coughs> Charge. So we gained Fassel, who is a provoker. That just means he's got more shield done. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I won't use you yet. Oh man, what are these things? Looks like f flingers. Alright, you need to swap over here. I think I can take out two of them right off the bat. Him and him. I can use two of power. Never mind, he's dead. Oh, he moved. What a bastard. Yeah, take out him. Oh, I should have stepped over in Tempest. Damn, I'm not thinking of anything. Insta kill. Oh, he got slammed. So they move when they get slammed. Okay. Or when they get hit. Uh-oh. He's on that. He's just getting hit by everything. And now he's useless because his armor is just too low. Or his strength is now low. He's like a human. Two, three, four tiles. One, one, two, three, four. But I want to hit that, so we gotta move all the way up. Oh, one too many. I only counted the visible ones now, not the dead one. Tempest would be nice here, but I'm just going to pull him out. Alright, kill him. Or... Dang. Bye, Gunnel. You were helpful. Yeah, they like to run. I don't like to do it. We can pale him. Takes hit. And then he runs away. Haha, <laughs> it's beautiful. I forgot who I was for a second. You're dead. 
I will say he's useful in a fight. I don't like his personality. Take on more. Like my humans and my shield banger are maxed. And my damage is kind of gone. Some of my damage is gone. My heavy hitters are gone. That's a good way to put it. I've got all the willpower in the world, though. What in the depths are these, you wonder, looking at the unusual dredge slingers? Nobody knows. Without warning, a deranged half-dead slag stumbles out of the brush, throwing itself upon the ox attached to the treasure cart. Surprise Varl pulled weapons, but not before the whole cart slides off slick rock in a sheer drop, stopped by suddenly stopped suddenly by a low growl. The enormous metal wagon dangles precariously off a cliff. From the end swings a confused lox, confused yawk, still tied to its reins. On top, the dredge hangs on tight, keeping the whole thing from plumbing over the side as Gunnolf, one hand white-knuckling the cart, the other wrapped around the tree trunk. Well, help him. You grab the cart and pull. You barely make any ground when the tree he's holding onto tears uh, from the ground, dragging you with terrifying force towards the edge. Everyone's going to help. Too late. The others lunge toward the cart just as it topples over the side. At the last moment, you let go, but Gunnolf does, does not. No! The cart plummets and flips over the, the rocks along the way, tossing its contents across the snow in a shower of golden gore. The ox and the dredge are torn to shreds. Gunnolf lies motionless, his limbs, li limbs splayed at unnatural angles. We just lost our first companion. Following the shock of Gunnolf's death, you find yourself wondering why that dredge went after the yawks in the first place. Then you realize the bigger problem is the vast fortune now laying at the bottom of the cliff. Damn. Try to recover Gunnolf's body. With few options, you settle on lowering a man by rope into the valley. He shouts that the battered body of Gunnolf is definitely dead. And with their combined weight, the rope won't hold. The gold is scattered across the rocks and too far to reach anyway. You face the fact that it has been a complete loss. A day later, you're back on the march with nothing to show for it. Damn. That means we lost Gunolf. I hadn't actually played through that last time. That's sad. I mean, I got a Warhawk to replace him, but it's not the same. I'll take it. <coughs> Alright. Yeah, it's... We lost somebody. I'll uh, leave. That's our first caravan loss. On either side. Damn. I see smoke over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. The caravan stops, the godstone looming overhead for a short rest. 
The warriors are glad for it, and the stone gives you an ancient sense of being watched over in a comforting way. Didn't help the bodies underneath it, though. The earth at the base of the godstone is scarred like a struggle occurred. Merchants. No dredge. Encircling Dengler are a variety of goods. A barrel of mead. Who knows how old. Loose silver, a statue made of soapstone. Offerings to a dead god. Check on the merchant brother. In the midst of the pile of bodies, you, a glitter catches your eye. You fish a gold necklace and find five golden rings strung on it. The merchant's brother. Guess he didn't make it. Take the necklace with the intent to return it. Take the necklace for yourself and leave it. You might as well return it. Don't know what made them think the godstone would be safe. We're completely exposed up here. If we're going to rest, I think we ought to do it a little further away. Dangler was always was one of the favorites amongst men. God of good fortune. They believed he brought luck, wealth, or whatever else you, you wish you had, but you couldn't get on your own. The word fortune has a lot of meanings. Eventually, you move on. How close to cross or to uh, cross time we are. I think that's where we're headed. Look at that! I see fighters. <coughs> In the distance, you see smoke rising from the trees. Drenched aren't known for setting fires, but it does get their attention. We'd use fires like these, uh, fires like that, to lead them along in the great wars. Yeah, but they wised up to that after a while. Interjects another warrior. Or it could be someone trying to get our attention, claims Fasold. The other group from Schlid were sent this way. No matter how you look at it, investigating will cost time. Let's send some Varl and take a look. Mogir, send a few warriors to look. They disappear over the hill, and you keep a steady pace while you wait for them to return. They don't reappear well past the time it should have taken. Let's go save them. You take Mogir and a dozen warriors with you. You shuffle past dozens of dead slag and varl before the clearing opens up. Hundreds of varls sit near the fire, including those you sent to investigate. One puffs on a pipe. Hacken. He greets you. Your warriors said you wouldn't leave them. He explains they came, they had come from Schlid and were surrounded when they lit a fire. Then lit a fire when they spotted you. Sorry you had to miss the fight. Oh, I gained people. <coughs> I should have went and got the battle experience, but we gained a whole bunch more varl. Mogir comes to you privately. I've seen some of the warriors disappearing. At first I thought it was my imagination. Now I'm certain several have gone missing. Mostly men, but some Varl too. Can't quite figure it. If it's abandonment, you can't let it stand. And Mogir questions once we returned. I couldn't get a straight answer out of him, and others denied it outright. I can't question the humans directly, and I'll be damned if Luden doesn't do, doesn't have something to do with this. We talked to him. I ordered it. I sent my men to bring back gold from the cart with that you left behind. If you have a problem with your warriors joining them, maybe you should keep them under control. Explain your actions. You left a pile of gold at the bottom of the hill. What are the chances it'll still be there months from now? The only reason we aren't each carrying a share is because you don't trust us. Nah, I'll threaten him. I've already stopped. We're too far now for anyone to catch up to the caravan. Ugh. There's probably a way to get Renown out of that. Your warriors demand a break. You halt the caravan with a sigh, but in all honesty, you're starting to feel the altitude and weariness for yourself. Mogir leans on a falling tree, fiddling with a crust of bread. Getting colder. You can see Ridgehorn just start to peek around the mountains. A flock of ravens float across the sky, the clear sky towards the fort. We should follow those birds. Why? Without another word, Mogir starts running towards the birds and tumbles over the cliff. Suddenly, he's gliding through the air, flapping his arms for all they're worth. 
He swoops towards Ridgehorn before bursting into flames and plummeting into the tower, which crumbles like a log from a smoldering campfire. What, what just happened? You think you've lost your mind. Then you wake up. You don't remember setting up camp or falling asleep in front of crackling logs. What's going on? You mutter. Mogir approaches you at the campfire. Hacken, did you see? Yeah. You both agree to keep it to yourselves. I have no idea what that was. But we're going to call that an episode here. We got some strange goings on here, uh, here at the camp. And we've lost our first member. So we'll have to figure out how it goes on from now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next time. Take care. Have a good one.